Hi, I'm Eric Voss, and The Walking Dead released a new trailer for season eight at Comic-Con. And wow, I feel like it's been years since I've talked about The Walking Dead. So much has changed. The background is still blue, but we're in a new office. We got new hosts. I'm showing leg now. I'm sorry, that was uh, too sexy. This trailer is five freaking minutes long and there's a lot to talk about. Of course, all of this footage is only from the first half of the season, probably up through episode seven because that's all they've shot so far. But if any of my predictions end up being right, yes, possible spoilers ahead. So let's get started. I hope you got your shitting pants on. What? Your shitting pants. I hope you're wearing them right now. Cause you are about to shit your pants. Okay, so the trailer opens on Negan and Gabriel. It looks like Gabriel has been captured by the saviors and he's in this very threatening situation. And Negan scares him by saying, I hope you got your shitting pants on. Now Gabriel's confused here, but I feel like special pants that you go to the bathroom in is Negan calling back a joke that he gave when he first met this group. It's gonna be PP Pants City here real soon. Really, pee pee pants to shitting pants is your classic heightening. But remember, Gabriel wasn't there at that lineup, so maybe that's why he doesn't get it. And throughout all of this, we hear the sounds of walkers outside. You can see their hands pressing against their window, but where is this exactly? Now, the blinds don't really look like the windows from the sanctuary last season, which makes me think maybe this is Alexandria or the kingdom, and the walkers have overrun one of these locations. I have some more thoughts on that later, but let's move on. Okay, so the trailer now uses this really cool percussion music from the instrument, the clave. You know, those things that your music teacher had you play with because we don't have any other musical talent. The clave start with this gradual build, kind of sounding like a ticking clock. It actually reminds me of a similarly gradual percussion build of Isaac Hayes' Run Fay Run. You might know that from the Kill Bill soundtrack. I just think this choice of using the clave as this percussion gets more and more complex is perfect for this whole idea of these different tribes in The Walking Dead clinking together as chaos gets more near. Okay, then we get this lens flare shot of Rick with his ax, and then this shot of Carol and Tara. Now, actually, later in the trailer, we see where this is. It's an overpass as they wait for a herd of walkers to pass underneath them. I like how Tara is still wearing her orange sunglasses. Remember, she picked those up on the way home from Oceanside last season. Also, a little missable detail here. Notice Carol here. She's looking at this drawing of a flower on the concrete wall next to her, and she's reflecting, perhaps, thinking about Sophia or maybe Lizzie and Mika. But then she turns away, staying focused on the mission. So now that Carol has finally returned to a world of violence, she doesn't want to get too soft. And then we get Coral looking through a Coral window. This shot is actually parallel to a shot in the very first episode. There's the same exact framing as when Coral's dad, Rick, looked in a car. Now the season eight premiere is actually gonna be the 100th episode of The Walking Dead. And that's a significant milestone. Actually in the comics, it's issue 100 was Negan's debut. So I'm thinking that they're gonna be celebrating this 100th episode with some callbacks to the beginning of the series. In fact, there's a few more that come up throughout this trailer. And then after shots of Morgan, Maggie, and Ezekiel from behind as his royal subjects clear the way, we get this interesting look at Daryl. Now, it looks like there's this flaming wreckage that's drawing walkers, but Daryl is in no rush to get out of there. This seems like it's part of his plan. Now, later in the trailer, we'll see Daryl blow a bunch of shit up. And I think this is part of a plan that he has who herd up a bunch of walkers, kind of like what we saw him do in season six. And as we go, we'll see where this herd might be going, but let's move on.
Okay, we get a look at more characters here with shots of Michonne and Rosita, and then Enid keeping watch of the hilltop, and then this shot of Aaron looking particularly upset with blood on his hands and face. Now, this is total speculation here based off of no real evidence other than someone looking sad. But if you watch my breakdowns last season, one character who I predicted might be meeting his maker at some point is Eric, Aaron's partner. After spending a couple seasons on the periphery of the show, Eric started randomly getting these big scenes and being part of these big missions, which traditionally on The Walking Dead happens when a minor character is about to die. So while it might be a little early to start speculating on who's gonna kick the bucket in season eight, yeah, Eric would be somewhere close to the top of my list. There can only be one Eric. That's a dumb joke. Then we see this shot of Tara pretending shooting a gun, kind of like a kid would or a drug dealer trying to look tough. This is interesting because Tara's been pretty non-violent on this show. Like she usually steps away from these big battles and lets other people do all the shooting. So who knows, maybe this shot means Tara will finally start stepping up to take a life. And then we see Dwight reading this note and it doesn't take much zooming and enhancing and flipping around to see that that says tomorrow. So my theory is that this note was written by Daryl as a warning. There's no way of knowing for sure, but we do know that Dwight and Daryl have in the past communicated by leaving each other these little love notes. For example, in the season finale last year, Dwight wrote the words didn't know on his soldier carving and left it for Daryl to find. Basically, Dwight was saying that he didn't know that Negan had to deal with the scavengers. So what does tomorrow mean, other than the obvious definition of the day after today? Well, judging from Dwight's facial expression here, he looks pretty alarmed. I'm guessing that this is Daryl warning Dwight about a pending attack from Rick's people. And when will this attack come? I don't know. Let's look at that note again. Oh my god, tomorrow. And this might just be me, but I like how this second layer of claves now joins the rhythm to the beat of the Terminator score. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. So I don't know if this is intentional or not, but I just do like this parallel of the music of a famous post-apocalyptic world where humanity is struggling to survive against killing machines. Well, I guess kind of avoiding themselves becoming killing machines is now connecting in a way to this post-apocalyptic world where humanity struggles to survive against killing machines while avoiding becoming the killing machines themselves. And then I really like this rotating shot that ended on this shot of a hallway with a flickering light and then Carol barely leaning in the frame. There's just something creepy and unnerving about it. It actually reminded me a lot of the movie It Follows, where the camera rotates around as the demonic figure appears closer and closer each time the camera makes its revolution. But also, judging from this flickering light, I'm assuming this place has backup generators and it might be some kind of lab or hospital. And this is another detail that reminds me of that very first episode, with Rick wandering alone through a hospital hallway as the lights were flickering over his head. Actually, there's another shot a few seconds later in this trailer with Rick wandering down another hallway, which might be the same location. That also reminds me of that pilot episode. The reason I bring this up is I feel like the show has kind of gotten away from its zombie horror roots. And now it's more of this war, western, geopolitical drama with zombies. I don't really have a problem with that transition. I actually think it's just the natural consequences of what these characters would do in this kind of world. But I would still love to see it return a little bit more to that kind of horror vibe. Like when Negan promised us that we're gonna shit our pants. It'd be nice if we ruined our clothes sometimes because we were legitimately creeped out. Okay, then this trailer shows us a close-up of this revolver. This is a Taurus ultralight. Now we know this is Daryl holding this. You can see Norman Reedus' star tattoo in his hand. Plus we see Daryl using this gun later to blow something up. But then when he turns the gun, we see that it has 43 hash marks on top of it. Presumably the number of people killed with this gun. Now we've never seen this gun before on the show and there's no Lucille insignia on it. So my guess is that this is gonna be one of those little Walking Dead details that pop up in the show sometimes and hint at some side story in the universe that we may or may not ever see. But something interesting worth pointing out is that 43 is actually around where Rick's human kill count is. At the end of last season, his on-screen kill count throughout the whole series is somewhere around 39 or 40 people. Now, of course, this gun is not Rick's gun. His gun is famously the Colt Python. Still, I just like this idea that there's someone out there who is as deadly as people like Rick or the governor or Negan, but who did it all with one weapon and is super proud of it. Uh, let's move on.
When I first met him, Jesus said my world was gonna get a whole lot bigger. But we found that world. Okay, in this next section, we get this binocular shot of a guy who I'm pretty sure is Aaron driving a car with these big metal sheeting plates on the side. Now, this is an interesting tactic. It could be used to block gunfire or to turn cars into practical shields. It kind of reminds me of the way that they rigged up that RV in Dawn of the Dead. Also, a few shots later in this section, we see this same kind of metal sheeting on a bunch of other cars. So I actually think this is part of that plan that I mentioned earlier. Herding all the walkers to a place and then using these cars backed up one behind the other to form a wall behind them and box them in. Okay, we get a close-up of someone using a rock to cut himself free from ropes around his wrist. And then much later in the trailer, we see the savior, Jared. He's rubbing his wrist as if he just freed them and he's wearing the same shirt. So I'm pretty sure this is the same guy. Now, you may remember Jared. He's that really annoying savior who taunted Richard last season. So it looks like this guy is coming back and he's going to be every bit as obnoxious and pretty sneaky too. But then we get this really cool shot of an eye peeking out of a Actually, a few other shots from the trailer help us piece together who this is and where this is. But you might consider it a spoiler, so if you don't want to know the answer to that question, skip to this time. Okay, first, later on, we'll see an interior angle of the shipping container with the person who's peeking out of the hole and check out the wound on that person's side. Yeah, that is Rick. Remember, Jada shot him inside at the end of last season, and you can kind of make out the bandages. Also, later in the trailer, there's another shot of this same shipping container and where is it? It's in the junkyard in the background behind Jadis. So putting all this together, it sounds like Rick will be captured at some point and held by the scavengers. Remember, this isn't the first time Rick has been kept prisoner inside a shipping container. He was able to get out of the one at Terminus in one piece, and God willing, he will do to the scavengers what he did to those people. <laughs> Okay, as Rick gives this rallying speech, notice how the characters are wearing different colored armbands, and all these colors correspond to which community they live in. So like Daryl and Tara's are white for Alexandria, and then Carol and Morgan wear red armbands for the kingdom, and Enid, and later we see Maggie, both wear green armbands for the hilltop. Now green might correspond to the crops that they grow at the hilltop, since it's mostly known as a farming community. And remember, red was already kind of the kingdom's color from their tiger banners that we saw at the end of last season. And I guess white as the color of Alexandria makes sense in a way if you consider black to be the color of the saviors, like with Negan's jacket and Eugene's Johnny Cash get up, white would be the opposite of that color. That would make Alexandria the opposite of the sanctuary. So why are they doing this? It seems like this alliance between the hilltop and the kingdom in Alexandria are splitting up into smaller divisions, and that these are kind of like their uniforms with their own insignia. Because if you remember, not everyone from these three communities know each other. It's not just the characters we know from the show, there's a lot of other random unknown. So these armbands help them spot each other when they see each other on the battlefield. Also interesting detail here, if you look in the background of that shot of the kingdom, you can see the sanctuary. So it's always been kind of hard to tell the exact geography of this show. We don't really know how far or close these locations are to each other, but now this is confirmation that the sanctuary and the kingdom are pretty close to each other. And when you think about it, that makes sense for why Ezekiel would have had this peace agreement with them. Like there really is no geographical distance between these two communities. It also makes you think that the kingdom probably has the most to risk by joining Rick in this alliance against the savior. Like they're now in open war with their literal next door neighbors. All right, let's move on. We found each other. That bigger world is ours by right. Those who use and take and kill, we end them. Thank you, your majesty. For what? for being such a cool dude. With everything we've beaten, everything we've endured, everything we've risen above, everything we've become, no matter what comes next, we've won. We've already won! All right, after that shot of Jesus laying this roadside bomb, which is probably one of the ones that Daryl blows up later, we get this interesting shot of these people marching down the road. They're walking in lines, and it looks like their hands are bound, kind of like a chain gang. So yeah, I'm pretty sure these are prisoners, and I'm guessing that these prisoners are saviors, since it looks like Jesus and Michonne are leading them. So my theory for this is that this could be part of some kind of prisoner exchange. So judging from all these other shots, there's clearly going to 
be some battles between the Saviors and Team Rick. And I think there's a very good chance that in the course of these battles, one division will end up being successful and capture a bunch of Saviors. Meanwhile, another division could fail and get themselves captured. And then both sides could decide maybe the best way forward is to swap back their POWs. Or maybe Team Rick is trading back all of these Saviors to get Rick out of captivity. I guess my point is that The Walking Dead is now a show about war and politics. They are all part of this world on The Walking Dead now, and I think we're gonna start seeing more of these power dynamics rather than just, you know, people giving big speeches and killing things. Which I've always loved, but, you know, if you're gonna start building society, you gotta start talking to people. Then we get this shot of Dwight at the sanctuary and the walker pit out front. You can see the metal-covered walkers from Eugene's suggestion to maintain their structural integrity last season. But if you look past those walkers, you can almost make out Gabriel on the other side of the fence. So maybe what's going on here is Negan and the Saviors are using Gabriel as kind of a pawn saying, hey, we got one of yours, kind of like they tried to do with Sasha last season. And I love this exchange between Jerry and Ezekiel. Thank you, Your Majesty. For what? For being such a cool dude. But doesn't it kind of sound like Jerry is saying these as final words right before diving into battle and sacrificing himself for his king? Like, I don't know, both of them look pretty bloodied up. It doesn't look like they're winning whatever battle they're in. So I'm hoping that's not the case. We aren't losing Jerry here. I really love that character. But let's face it, guys, this is war, and it wouldn't be The Walking Dead if every character we love survived. Anyway, let's move on. I've been fighting since the farm. Can't stop now. We need to win. Let me come with you. I need to correct you on that point. We need to keep our faith in each other. If we can hold on to that with everything we have, the future is ours. The world is ours! Okay, so now some new music kicks in. This is Prisoner's Song by the Dropkick Murphys. And yeah, the Dropkick Murphys pub rock sound is kind of weird to hear on a show like The Walking Dead. Like, I kind of associate that music more with Ireland or Boston. But if you listen closely, the lyrics are super appropriate. Looking back on the past where we still had a chance We were pawns in a game that we could not win Now we're alone, just a pick and stone win Yeah, Rick and his people used to be pawns in a game that they couldn't win with Negan making all the rules, but now they're dreaming of a future that they can build for themselves. And while all these other characters flash by very quickly, we get one new face, this guy. But I think there's a good chance that this character will end up being Sadiq from the comics. So in the comics, Sadiq is a character who actually doesn't show up until significantly after this current all-out war with the Saviors. But considering the show moved up other stuff, like the introduction of Oceanside, I feel like there's a very good chance this will be Sadiq even though this version of the character doesn't really look anything like the Sadiq in the comics. And it looks like Rosita and Michonne will go on their own side adventure in one of these episodes. And I'm wondering where is this location? Like it's filled with odds and ends, like a hoarder lives here. It almost looks like that marketplace floor in the sanctuary, but I don't think they'd be able to sneak in there undetected. Anyway, let me know where you think this could be in the comments. And a lot of people have been asking about why we're seeing Morgan and Jesus fighting. Now, it doesn't look like Jesus particularly wants to fight Morgan here. So my guess is that Morgan is still teetering on that line between stable Morgan and clear Morgan. Remember, especially after his son figure, Benjamin, died last season. So maybe Morgan is going off the deep end again, and Jesus is trying to make him come home to Jesus. Let's move on. Over your ears. Trust the king. We pin the man, takes care of itself. That's the plan. And on this day, we begin to reshape this world. Okay, it is great to see Carol be Carol again. She just looked like she doesn't give an F when she's shooting something with a massive shotgun while Jerry and Henry just stare at her. In my opinion, Carol has always been most interesting as a character, as this kind of awkward outside dog that struggles to adapt to domestic life. Now, I don't know what she's shooting here, but I have a feeling it's something that's probably not that dangerous. Maybe like a crow that's picking at these crops. 
Carol would make the best scarecrow. She would just like hang a dead crow from a post to send a message to the other crows. And then after some great shots of Shiva in action and Jerry finally using that battle axe, we get this line from Aaron. We pin them and it takes care of itself. That's the plan. Okay, again, this is all just me guessing, but it sounds like Aaron is hinting at this plan that I've been alluding to all episode. So here's what I think their strategy is. One, get Daryl to herd up a bunch of walkers with boom booms and then lure them toward the sanctuary. At that point, Aaron and the others use these shield cars to box in the walkers from behind. And the goal of this is to trap in the sanctuary just like Alexandria was trapped in in the middle of season six, and then let the walkers do the rest. Cut off the saviors from the outside world and any kind of food or supply lines, and hopefully some walkers breaking in and destroying it from the inside out. However, based on Aaron's frustration here, I'm guessing that some of the people on Team Rick are gonna get emotional once the saviors get an eyesight and they're gonna go rogue and try to strike at the saviors directly. Okay, I also like this shot of Dwight here. Notice how the framing places his head side by side with this walker whose face is also scarred up on the right side. It seems like the idea here is to show the progression of Dwight's two-facedness, his fear of what could happen to him if he doesn't play this double act perfectly. This overhead shot of the junkyard shows the scavengers again with their weird concentric circle formation. But who is that greeting Jadis in the center there? It's kind of hard to tell, but that long black hair kind of looks like Eugene's power mullet. You might have noticed that Eugene is the only major character on The Walking Dead that otherwise doesn't show up anywhere in this trailer. But if this is him here, I'm guessing he would be talking with Jadis to try to get her to hand off Rick to him. Remember, he's inside that shipping container in the background so that Eugene can bring him back to Negan. Really, one of the things I'm more interested to see in season eight is what happens with the Savior's alliance with the Scavengers. That was kind of a twist introduced at the end of season seven that they didn't really unpack a whole lot. So compared to Alexandria in the Hilltop in the Kingdom, whose relationship seems pretty tight, like they're willing to jump into battle to protect each other's lives and homes, I just don't see the saviors or the scavengers dying for each other. And I think that lack of trust will end up being a huge problem for them. Okay, let's look at that shot of Carl falling back on some dead animal. Now, it's hard to tell exactly what it is, even though I don't think it's what I'm about to say. Spoiler alert in case you don't want to know. Some people are saying that this could be the corpse of Shiva the tiger. Now the detail people are pointing at is that that kind of looks like a black tiger stripe on the bottom of the frame here. But I think that's the animal's eye behind Carl there. And to me that just doesn't really look like Shiva's head. My guess is this is a deer. And if so, a deer would be an interesting callback to the deer that Carl found in season two. And maybe Carl just has really terrible luck with deers. And then we get this roadside explosion blowing up a couple cars. Notice that religious statue, we saw last season that the road to the sanctuary is actually marked by a bunch of religious statues. So it seems like people on Team Rick are using a bunch of guerrilla tactics to attack the saviors. Including this, a point of view shot from inside a car as a truck smashes into it, which reminds me a lot of the shot at the opening of the movie Heat, where a bunch of criminals also use guerrilla tactics to ambush an armored car. And then we get this crazy, awesome chase scene. Rick speeds up behind this Hummer that presumably is being driven by saviors, jumping from one car to another. Guys, we've never seen this kind of high-speed stunt on The Walking Dead. AMC must have been brainstorming how to top the action, and then one of those Saturday afternoon repeats of Raiders of the Lost Ark came on, and they're like, yes truck chase. Indy jumping from horse to truck. Indy slamming his foot on the gas pedal. We're doing this on The Walking Dead. And then smash cut to the title, The Walking Dead. And you may have noticed this is a new title. In the past, every new season of The Walking Dead shows the title looking more and more deteriorated, obviously to parallel the decay of human flesh of a zombie. But now this is the first season where it doesn't do that. It feels like it's saying that for the first time ever, Rick and his crew are trying to have a fresh start. But also, I think that this new title is suggesting that The Walking Walking Dead is no longer a show where decaying human zombies are the biggest threat. Now it's about these new societies clashing with each other. Two colors, white and black. White, the color of Alexandria, facing off against the surrounding black of the saviors. Or hell, maybe in October AMC is going to release an even more corroded title and I'm going to look like an idiot. Let's move on.
Okay, so some interesting stuff here. For one, there's another little callback to the very first episode where Rick wakes up and then looks over at flowers, just like he did in that opening hospital room. But now, instead of dried out and wilted, these flowers are fresh. So what's going on here? Some people thought that this shot means that everything in The Walking Dead was just a bad dream and Rick is finally waking up from his coma as an old man. <sighs> no. But the answer, I think, does connect to an event in the comics. So if you haven't read the comics and you don't want to be spoiled, even though I don't think it's a huge deal, skip to this time if you don't want to know anything about it. So yes, if you've read the comics, you'll know that after the all-out war with Negan comes to an end, the comics abruptly jump forward in time two years, where Rick has aged into old man Logan. He has a big gray beard and he walks with a cane after an injury he suffered in the war. So the surface way of reading this scene is that that season eight is gonna conclude the savior war and feature this time jump. But I think that would be a pretty big bummer to drop this spoiler in the first trailer that we see for the season. Also, as I mentioned before, production has only shot the first seven or so episodes of season eight at this point, and everything we see in this trailer is probably from early in the first half of the season. So my theory for what this is, is sometime early in the season, maybe the prologue, the first scene of the season, we're gonna see something like this vision of Rick in the future, which would then stage all the events in the present day as him looking back on this war and the people he lost. But there's also another way I could see this going. I don't think we have to interpret this image literally. In fact, remember at the beginning of season seven, Rick experienced a vision of everyone in Alexandria, including Abraham and Glenn and little baby Ree, all sitting around this table. Now, of course, we knew this wasn't real. This was after Glenn and Abraham had died. This was just Rick's dream for the future of Alexandria that he would now never have. Similarly, I think these shots of old man Grimes could be a vision that Rick has for an ideal future if he ever manages to rid the world of Negan. The opportunity to grow old. What do you think this closing shot of old man Rick means? And which character do you think is the most likely to die in this first half of season eight? Now I mentioned Eric and Jerry, but then again, we did just hear Morgan say, I don't die which, yeah, kind of sounds like the biggest tell. Like Morgan might as well have said, I'm gonna live forever! Anyway, let me know down in the comments what you think. And if you haven't already, go back and make sure to catch up on all of my breakdowns for the season seven episode. I get in some really interesting theory and analysis that I don't think anyone else on the YouTube really cares that much about. And share this video and subscribe to New Rockstars. We're trying to cover all the big trailers that came out at Comic-Con, so keep an eye out for those. And if you feel generous, you can contribute to us on Patreon. Big thanks to all of our donors, especially Pony Stark. You can hit me up on Twitter at EA Voss with any thoughts that you have or follow New Rockstars on Twitter at New Rockstars. Thanks for watching. Now I'm gonna go watch a bunch of other Comic-Con trailers. Oh my god, there's a new Thor trailer. Why didn't you say anything? <laughs> <laughs>